Hi, welcome to Donegal Railway Heritage Centre. I'm Mark Chairman of the Board here, and we're delighted to announce our launch of our new book, The County Donegal Remembered. I'm going to pass over now to Niall, the manager here, and he is going to say a few words and do some more introductions. Hello, welcome to uh, our live launch this afternoon. And also, we've got a crowd assembled behind. Um, this is an important day for the railway, as many as will have seen more recently. If you look around this station, we've had a lot of interesting developments, including, of course, the first original steam engine here back on site in many years, and also a lot of refurbishment. Uh, in the last few years, we've also been doing kind of more publications. And more recently, Jim, who will introduce in a second, had just for us the Lux Willie Remembered. So we're delighted again to be introducing a new book, uh, The County uh, London Derry. So it's going to be London Derry, so we <laughs> The County's Johnny Gall. I'm sort of getting confused. A uh, uh, book to be uh, launched today, anyway, and it's great to have it. So, and also, as I said, before I pass across to Jim to say a few words, I have to particularly thank uh, Peter Leach, is with us too, because Peter has kindly sponsored this publication and it would not have happened without him. We are fortunate enough that here in Donegal, we've got fantastic uh, railway heritage that uh, still is around, um, which, which you can see. But this book very much records a lot of the fantastic uh, railways that we used to have across the county. And who knows, in a few years, there could be railways returning to Donegal, uh, if we believe the rumours anyway. But we will see, if not our own heritage railway, possibly back up and running. So I'm going to hand across now just to... Uh, to Jim beside me here. He actually wrote this lovely book and put it together. Thanks, Sam. Um, thanks, Niall. Um, this book here is really comes about over a few conversations we've had. Um, I was persuaded to do the, the Lux Fully book last year and was writing it. I kept coming across some fantastic colour photographs of Donegal, black and white. And John, people like John Bowman beside me and Piers with this very generous donation, you know, to sponsor the book, which means that the book, you know, every cent of the book will go directly to our, our work here in the Heritage Centre. There's 250 photographs. The vast majority are unpublished, and a particular thanks to Ernie Brack for his, his act, complete access of his fantastic collection, and all our people really, really helped me. I'll go ask Peter, who's sponsoring the book, to say a few words next. Thank you. I, thank you for that. Um, I just really wanted to take the opportunity, having seen the Locks Willy book that um, Jim did, that uh, it was a good opportunity to get the, the fantastic collection of, of photographs published. And um, as a modeler of the Donny Donegal, I, there's never enough photographs there for reference. So um, we want, I wanted to try and make those pictures available more widely. And also being a book printer and having been a book printer for 40 years, then I know what, I, what I'm doing it when it comes to books. So I thought, well, approach the society and see if they, they'd like my assistance. And, and thankfully they did do. And we've now managed to get this book out for publication. It's still still not 100% complete yet. But um, the good, good thing is with the, the digital technology nowadays, you can do shorter runs so that you can update it rather than having to produce 2,000 books at a time and they'll always be forever dated. You can actually now hopefully update books in, in the future and do much shorter print, print runs. So, um, yeah, we'll be, we'll be working through this publication and, and updating it as we go. And it, it, it's a fantastic uh, resource for anybody that's interested in the three-foot gauge railways of, of Ireland. And it's, it's just been a, a wonderful project to work on. And thank you for the efforts that you've, you've put in, Jim, because... Much as though I, I can do the putting ink on paper and, and making the book, I'm not very good when it comes to the content. So I've used Jim's Jim's expertise to book, pull the book together. And um, I'd like to also thank Jocelyn Berry, a very good friend of mine, who's doing in the process of doing the, the page makeup of the book. And um, she knew nothing about Irish narrow gauge railways when she started, but she's quite quite an expert on Donegal rail cars now. <laughs> so, thank you for that, and um, yeah, that's enough from me. Grand Lord Jonathan, now, um, I'm a good friend, and it's, a, it's also he's got a very personal story about the book too. Yes, uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Jonathan Beaumont. Like Jim, who I've known for what forty odd years. Mm -hmm. Plus, um, uh, I'm a railway historian author as well. Uh, when I first got to hear of this project, 
I had posted some of my late father's photographs of both the Lock Smilly and the Donegal Railway online. And I got a message out of the blue from Peter asking could some of the pictures be used in a publication. So long story short, I knew Jim already, so we've been talking about this project ever since. Uh, I know, having been involved in assisting Jim in this regard, Jim has left no stone unturned in seeking out every possible collection, several private collections of mutual unpublished. friends of ours, unpublished stuff, as he said, uh, plus the vast archive of the centre here holds and various other places too. We spent a whole day in the centre here going through some amazing stuff, but unless this book was to be that thick, we had to go through them and really be very harsh and filter out only the very best of the best. We did so partly from the point of artistic composition on the part of the original photographer, partly on account of railway or other historic interests. And the idea was to create a journey along the line from Derry down to Killy Beggs, all the branches in one section, but also leave a section for the the iconic rail cars, the locomotives, the carriages, and all the other sections of the railway. We're confident that we have every location on the entire system covered, except for one or two very small places of which, even in an archive this size, there appears to be no photographic record surviving. Um, Jim mentioned that I had a personal story about the railway. Well, I'm, uh, while I'm technically old enough to have travelled on the railway, the first time I saw it, it had just closed. But my late father was a civil engineer and he worked for the railways. As many of you will know, the Donegal Railway was jointly administered by the, uh, <coughs> the Great Northern Railway and the LMS Railway in England, and more particularly in Belfast. This was the joint committee that ran the County Donegal Railway's joint committee. My father is possibly the only railway man who ever was involved with the Donegal Railway, both wearing an NCC hat, an LMS hat, and also later in his career, a Great Northern hat. As a civil engineer, his job was to inspect the track, to inspect the bridges, to inspect the, the superstructure, anything but the actual trains. In the late 1940s, he was sent to look at the Glenties branch. Um, my father, who Jim will remember, uh, unlike me, was uh, a very understated sort of person. Uh, faced with a disaster, he'd say there was a problem and <laughs> so on, uh, whereas I'd be the opposite. Uh, but his report into the state of the track on the Glenties branch. If I didn't know he'd written it, I would tell people, no, he definitely didn't write that. It was damning. It was damning. He basically said that if you want to continue running trains on this, the track isn't to be repaired. It's to be removed in its entirety from Glenties to Stranorla. We're not finished. So the sleepers were not finished. So have the sets of points. They were not finished. Now all the track's gone. The roadbed under it, the ballast, was sodden. This was full of moss and weeds. That's to be dug out to two feet deep, relayed, building a new railway. We're not finished. The drains along the side of the line had to go too. Sadly, this was the result of the economical, the austerity practices of uh, the former general manager, uh, Mr. Forbes, over a period of time. We see the Loch Swilly Railway in the County Donegal as having gone through periods of um, making economies to make ends meet. In the case of the Loch Swilly, this was a necessity, and the result was they survived in road haulage into this century. In the case of the County Donegal, it's less explainable because the Donegal had two very rich parents. Why didn't Forbes just ask the Great Northern for more money? They had it. However, be that as it may, uh, the Glenties branch was too far gone and ended up being closed. A decade later, he's in the Barnesmore Gap where that picture is. Uh, 
the result was he slapped a speed limit over it. We all know what happened. Sadly, the County Donegal Railway closed. That's my personal story. 25 years later, uh, we are on holiday in the Isle of Man and we get a train along the Isle of Man Railway, which is also three foot gauge from Douglas to Port Erin. And we're rolling along in a wooden carriage along the lines of the ones that used to run on the Donegal Railway. My dad looks out the window and says, <coughs> he says, just, just reminds me of going through uh, County Donegal, reminds me of going up to Letterkenny or something. And I thought, yeah, well, that's the nearest I guess. However, <laughs> uh, it gives me great pleasure to recommend this. Uh, as the other speakers have said, this is for a very good cause, this centre. Places like this desperately need support. So everybody who's watching, please support the Donegal Railway Heritage Centre. Go out and buy this. Buy Jim's other book as well. It all goes to the same cause. 20 euros, 15 pounds sterling. Very good buy and for a very good cause. Thank you. Thank you. Just to, thank you again. <laughs> just simply to repeat what just Jonathan just said, it is very, it has been a challenge and as we know, two years, as we all know, with masks and hand wash and all the other things, precautions. But it has been our publications that have kept us kind of going. And you've seen the great work has happened around here. So I said, if you go on to our website, which is donegalrailway.com, you can pre-order it at the moment. And we're expecting a lot of interest, as there was for the previous book. And just remind you, too, that in August, we're actually going to do the official opening of Jumbo. Uh, which is very exciting to a lot of politicians and funders there. And RT actually have done a nationwide program on it. So again, to thank you for coming here today physically and also online. And to thank Jonathan, Peter and Jim for their, their work. It's been tremendous. And thank everybody for their ongoing support in recognising this fantastic asset that, that we have here. Thank you. Thank you.